On the news this morning, Governor Saludo restates resolve to eliminate crime and criminality in Anambra State. ABS Acting Managing Director Malaysia urges on its business community to reciprocate Governor Saludo's interventions. Minister of Police Affairs Digin Yadi urges community leaders to support security agencies to fight bandits. Torrential rains and flooding kill 12 people in Colombia. Hello, beautiful morning to you and welcome to Breakfast News. I am David Wapasale. Before the news in detail, we remind you that Governor Chukuma Solodo has come for a total turnaround of Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him our maximum support. The Governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Solodo, has conducted an honor an on-the-spot assessment of Aguata local government headquarters which was attacked by some hoodlums. The governor went round and inspected the facilities and properties bound by, the, by criminal elements. Government House correspondent Valentine Mbadoa has the details. Governor Soledo describes the act as mindless criminality which he said cannot be condoned in Anambra state. He revealed that Combined forces of security agents in the state before the attack stormed the criminal camp between Agulese Juku and Oboji and smoked out the criminals whom, while fleeing the camp, decided to destroy the local government but commended the security agencies for their timely intervention. The governor reaffirmed the total resolve of his administration to stamp out criminality in Anambra state and called on those involved to come out as government will help them become agents of positive change. He maintained that anyone who continues in that line of criminality will be treated as one. The governor regretted that from the ones arrested, that 85% came from one southeast state, while the other 15 are from another southeast state, which shows that Ndibo are indeed destroying their own land by themselves. Governor Saludo emphasized that there will be no hiding place for criminals in Anambra, adding that Anambra will take back their land. Anambra State House of Assembly has confirmed 20 nominees as commissioner designates for Anambra State government. The House confirmed the appointment during plenary after the chairman of House Committee on Screening and Election Matters, Dr. Pascal Abodike, presented the report of the committee to the House, which found them suitably qualified to serve a number of states as commissioners. House of Assembly correspondent Tukwe Meka Mordelem now reports. The commissioner designates and their portfolios are Mr. Ifatu Onejeme Finance, Professor Ofonze Amuchaze Lance, Mr. Ifanyi Okom Works and Infrastructure, Ms. Chiamaka Nake Budget and Economic Planning, Dr. Afam Obidike Health, Mr. Patrick Ayamba Youth Development, Mrs. Ifeyungwa Obinabo Women Affairs and Social Development, Dr. Obinna Ngonade Commerce and Industry, Mr. Julius Chukwemeka Power and Water Resources, Professor Ngozi Chuma Ude Education, Mr. Paul Mosu Information. Others are Dr. Foster Ihejo for Agriculture, Mrs. Patricia Igwebike Transport, Mr. Felix Odimebu Environment, Honorable Paulinus Onyeka Housing, Mr. Anthony Ifanya Petroleum and Mineral Resources, Mr. Donatus Onyenji culture, tourism, and entertainment. Honorable Tony Mwabwane, local government, chieftaincy, and community affairs. Mrs. Sylvia Ifemeje, justice, and attorney general. Mr. Chikode Anara, homeland affairs. Speaker of the house, right honorable Uche Okafo, read out their confirmation while the lawmakers supported it through voice vote. In his remark, right honorable Okafo, urged the commissioner designates to give their best in their services to Anambra State, as according to him, Governor Chukuma Soludo is confident that Ndi Anambra will experience 
good governance evidenced in the first step he has taken to move the state forward, assuring that the House will support them to discharge their duties creditably. You, as Mr. Governor's representative in your various ministries, should also live up to expectation by showing competence and character in the discharge of your duties. The House of Assembly will continue to interact with you in your various ministries through our oversight duties for the common good of the state. Another state is our own, and collectively we shall make it great. In a vote of thanks, the Commissioner Designate for Finance, Mr. Onejeme, assured that they will live up to expectations. And I would like to, on behalf of my colleagues and myself, reassure Mr. Speaker and the House and the Governor and the Anambra that we will do our utmost best to ensure that the governor's manifesto and other legislative support that this house provides in the course of this administration are fully implemented. Also at plenary, the member representing Agwata One constituency, Dr. Nnamdi Ume, returned to the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. Dr. Ume, who defected to the All Progressives Congress, APC, before the November 6, 2021 Anambra governorship election, tendered apologies to the leadership of APGA for abandoning the party when they needed him most and assured that he is now a true party man and will work with APGA members in the House and the leadership of the party to move it forward. So Speaker, I rise confidently to inform this Honorable House of Records that I have <coughs> successfully made a U-turn and uh, retraced my steps and I'm fully back to my home party after. From the State House of Assembly, it's been Chukwe Mecca Mordelem ABS News. Acting Managing Director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, Mr. Gabe Obaleze, has called on the Onitsha business community to reciprocate Governor Chukwu Masoludo's multifaceted interventions in the socio-economic and health challenges of the area by remaining responsible and law-abiding citizens. Kenneth Kuchkwode has the details. Mr. Akbaleze, who was exchanging views with the management of Transglobe Pharmaceuticals, Onisha, said the governor's plan to transform Oboko into a smart, prosperous, livable city, as well as salvage the commercial city of Onisha from menaces of touts and extortionists, required that they support him with prompt payment of tax and genuine levies. The acting MD, Mr. Akbaleze, who was with some senior staff and committee members of the recently inaugurated revenue think tank of the station, appreciated the pharmaceutical company for being one of the known stakeholders of ABS and noted that there was need for both of them to maintain key partnership that would benefit both the station and the company. Mr. Okbaleze explained that the ABS is repositioning itself to be a media brand with global competitiveness and will keep doing everything necessary to see a holistic change in the media station, seeking for support from stakeholders. So I went and said, I gave you the I gave you the sponsorship when I had it. I think I'm going to go to work. I don't know what it is. When I'm going to go to work, I'm going to go to work. 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 Receiving the ABS team, the director and chief executive officer of Transglobe Pharmaceuticals Company, Chief Jasper Obalafulaku, thanked the ABS for the visit and extolled the drive of the acting managing director to put ABS on a constant growth and stride, assuring that the company is well disposed to partner with ABS, especially in sponsorship of its programs 
an advert for the company. I must tell you now, for you to face the competition, you have to get to the, the age, yes. stage, even the man. Comes down to their level yes. to get them. Now, the level of this uh, current situation, both Edo is high. Edo, Edo. Coverage. Edo. I don't know, bankers, not mobile banking. Yes. It back on a TV, look clear. It back on a radio, look clear. So, you know, I'm going to look on a also speaking, the chairman of the company, Chief Bart Eli, expressed confidence that both the company and ABS will enjoy fruitful partnership, urging ABS to keep repositioning itself to be better. In a vote of thanks, a member of the ABS revenue think tank, Mrs. Franca Ononuju, thanked the ABS for its partnership over the years and hoped that the visit will yield mutual dividends as ABS will keep striving to be the best in broadcasting. And you are one of our old and best clients, which they know. They know Translo through Tony Educhi and Franca Omanuchu. Transglobe Pharmaceutical Company deals on a wide variety of health products, including the Sena Leaves Herbal Tea from Onesha. It's been Kenetuku Chukwodi for ABS News. And then to politics now, U.S.-based Tochukwe Ibeke has officially joined the race for Dunukofia, Njikok, and Anoche Federal Constituency as he picked the expression of interest and nomination forms of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, at their national sectorate in Abuja. We bring you details. Mr. Ibekie from Nogo in Dunukofia local government area of Anambra State came to the party secretariat in the company of other aspirants and bigwigs of the party. He said he decided to run with the sole aim of changing the narratives of his people and making the needed difference in their lives. According to him, the desire to replicate the anticipated quality leadership of Governor Soludo in his constituency is his motivation as he hopes to make a difference in an average person's life in the constituency. <laughs> He said he would assist by introducing policies and spearheading the enacting of laws that will touch the lives of people positively, irrespective of their class or status in society, as he is passionate about the state. Hence, he decided to participate in what he termed change breaking. The aspirant, who was full of praises, for the party leadership on how well and far they had taken the party, especially by moving her from regional to the national party, promised the people of his constituency good representation as he is going to represent their interests and not himself as some people did in the past. And still in politics, a technocrat and an Afghan stalwart comrade Ozo Wons, who has picked the expression of interest and nomination forms to represent Newe North, Newe South, and the Epusigo Federal Constituency in the Federal House of Representatives on the other platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA. Comrade Wonsu, a seasoned information technologist, an entrepreneur, and employer of labor who obtained the forms in, accompanied by his supporters at the party national secretary to Abuja, expressed zeal to serve his people, assuring that he's going to usher in a new dawn of all-round transformation in the annals of Newe North, South, and the Fusigo Federal Constituency with quality representation that will bring massive development to the area. We we'll bring you the details. Comrade Nwosu, who hails from Ogwe, Otolo Newe, in Newe North local government area, promised to uphold that legacy which Apuga is known for, which include grassroots development, transparency, accountability, and quality representation if elected. 
He further expressed confidence in the leadership style of Governor Chukuma Soludo, noting that his administration will take Anambra to a greater height while eulogizing the National Working Committee of APGA, led by its chairman, Shi Victor Oye, for the modalities they mapped out for the success of the event. Comrade Wosu, who is a senior business intelligence analyst, a community leader, and president Chevron Multipurpose Cooperative Society, disclosed that through his foundation called Reality Forum, he has touched so many lives, awarded scholarships to over 160 students in the university, attracted real estate investment by oil investors in the Millennium City, Oka, and 500 million naira solar powered mother and child care center at Shukuemeka Ogmi Gojuku Teaching Hospital, Amako Oka, built by multinational oil giants where he works. The technocrat, who has also provided humanitarian projects in his constituency, is a strong believer in the political ideology of APGA. The Minister of Police Affairs, Al-Haji Muhammad Dengriadi, has called on community leaders to support security agencies in the fight against bandits and other elements threatening peace and security of the country. The minister made the call at an interactive session with newsmen in Abuja. The minister said police and infrastructure are currently receiving attention to strengthen kinetic operations against mindless persons or groups orchestrating violence against Nigerians. He said the recent deployment of drones by the Nigerian police for surveillance of vulnerable locations and additional explosive ordnance devices to detect bombs and other covert measures would help in curtailing violent crimes. According to him, the police is also restrategizing its kinetic and non-kinetic operations with a view to crushing all forms of security challenges in the country. He said the federal government's commitment to maintaining peace to create conducive environment for economic growth will continue to require the support of all. Torrential rainfalls and flooding have killed at least 12 people at a mining camp in mountainous northwest Columbia, with another two reported missing and more damage, and more damage expected, authorities have said. The flooding destroyed one level of the mining camp as well as part of a plant, according to Antiquare government. The effort to recover the missing was delayed until this morning due to increment weather, rescue officials have said. It added that 20 families were evacuated from a nearby town need to risk a further flooding with various rivers around Abrihua uh, threatening to bust their banks. Several rural roads were made impossible by landslides. President Ivan Duke expressed solidarity with the families of the victims. In sports, UEFA has approved new licensing and sustainability regulations to replace its existing financial fair play rules, allowing European clubs to make bi bigger losses than before while bringing in caps on spending on wages and transfers. As expected, European football's governing body decided to overhaul the FFP rules that were introduced in 2010 in order to reduce periodic club debts across the continent. UEFA will now allow clubs to report losses of 60 million euros over three years rather than 30 million euros previously, and the permitted figure will even reach 90 million euros for a club in good financial health. However, that realization of the rules is combined with New Zealand on wage spending. The remains of the late Princess Cho Mwafo have been laid to rest at her husband's compound Abata village in Diowu, in Orumba North local government area. The late Mrs. Wafo, who died at the age of 40, survived by her husband, Mr. Kinsley Wafo, four children and brothers. Onyinye Agobeze reports. During the funeral service, the parish priest of St. Lawrence Anglican Church in Diowu, Reverend Divine Abalogu, while consoling the family, said that the deceased was a good wife, which was evident in her relationship with family and friends. Reverend Abalogu, who noted that Jesus is the only way to heaven, said that the earthly body is only a tent, as the most important thing is where one will spend eternity. Living for eternity. Sincerely speaking, you desire Choma so much. Your feelings now will just be, God, is this real? Can this time just go back a little bit 
Let me see Chome again and spend one hour, two hours, three hours with her again. But he cannot come back because Chome has gone to be lost. And that will let us know that it is very important as we live this life, let us know that here is not our home. While thanking all who came to commiserate with his family, Mr. Kingsley Wafo said his wife was a noble woman whose good heart touched all who came in contact with her, promising to always cherish her even after death and take good care of their children. Also, her daughter, Miss Oloe Bube, who recounted the numerous teachings of her late mother, promised to live a purposeful life and take good care of her younger siblings. In a remark, a brother to the deceased, Mr. Onyeka Eze, said that his late elder sister played the role of a mother, role model, confident, and will forever be missed as he prayed for her soul to rest in the bosom of the Lord. <laughs> The traditional Prime Minister of Ndiowu, Chief Godwin Ubaja, urged the family to take solace as the deceased lived a worthy life. From Ndiowu in Orumba North Council area, I am Onye Agubeze reporting for ABS News. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television. Or ca you can follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV or log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Before we go, here are the main points. Again, we told you that Governor Soludo has restated resolve to eliminate crime and criminality in Anambra State, as ABS Acting Managing Director Baleze has urged on the business community to reciprocate Governor Soludo's interventions. We also told you that Minister of Police Affairs Degi Yadi has urged cabinet leaders to support leaders to support security agencies to fight bandits as torrential rains and flooding have killed 12 people in Colombia. We remind you that Governor Tukuma Soluda has come for a total turnaround of Anambra State Academy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him our maximum support for the tax ahead. I am David Obokwasele, thanking you for joining us this morning. <laughs>